The time has come, but I have to calm down. <laughs> Ragnarok. Four years I wait, man. Four years. Oh. Now it's here. You make me this, bring me. Okay, okay. I stay relaxed, relax, brother. I stay relaxed. Relax. Strap in or strap on. No shame. Dead. I will give you now my review of God of War Ragnarok. 50 hours play. My Ragnarok is numb and wundgescheuert. God of War difficulty and trust me, I have a lot to say. There will be things that you will almost certainly disagree with. But all I ask is that you listen to me so you understand where I'm coming from. Beijing suddenly turn up hurting me bake. Also, disclaimer, there will be zero story spoilers. No, uh, uh, uh. That being said, I will talk about the game and I will talk about it hard. I have to talk about one important feature that's in the game that is revealed quite early on. It's not a spoiler unless you consider any new mechanic that I show a spoiler. But trust me, I will mention it because it's a very important to my overall rating later on. But I'll tell you nothing about the story itself. That you can believe. But if I hear whining in the comment section, where, where, where is Shut to the shop. I want to make it clear as come. The foundation remains excellent. Ich bin Kratos. <laughs> You may not believe it because of, you know, the big epic battles, the cinematic cutscenes, the mythology. What I love the most is the chill, low-key exploration and puzzle solving. I fucking love it. It remains top tier over here. <gasps> Ace in the Anus. How do I open this chest? Bing, bong, bong. Da, 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 da. Sometimes your companions point out the solution a bit too fast. Like you take one more second, they're like, Wait, I have you thought about this? It would be nice if they would shut up a bit more, especially uh, me. Hey, brother. You are right, brother. Call me, bro, one more time. But it's okay. I've been listening to Taylor Swift's new album in the background, so I don't hear that shit. I just love when the game lets me off the leash, like the dog that I am. It still works, and it's still a blast. Blast. There's so much content in Ragnarok. It's like the first game times one and a half. Absolutely solid. And it's just a blessing to see the realms in different styles, you know? That's Fanboy Winter for you guys. It's Space Nobody. Fanboy compilation. Check it out. Yes. What a gorgeous game. What a beauty might. You want to buy a this knob? The realms you visit are massive. No longer is it like Midgard, one big hub zone. A zone. <laughs> But every realm is now its own hub and it keeps getting bigger. You're like, whoa, this, this realm is big. Bam, more, more, more. Like in Star Wars Fallen Order, where also the maps get bigger and bigger. Fucking epic shit. The crater, an entirely optional region. Oh, monsieur. It's my, my favorite. favorite. Five hours in that region alone, just for fun. And you can triple the amount of side quests, buddy. The fucking geister, the ghost, the spirit goes, mm, find my deck. Good shit. Now you travel between realms with the, with the door, you know, the, the fast travel door from the previous game. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had to get used to that at first. I missed the big tower. You know the tablet that you turn the tablet to, to, to travel to the back realms and the tree goes <laughs> And in the first game it said like this realm has been locked by Odin and in my head I made a mental check note <laughs> And I said, I'm gonna come back here in a few years and I can't wait to access these realms. You, 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 you took that from me, that chance. But at the same time, it's much faster and less of a hassle. Because let's be real, the way you transport in the past, it kind of took forever. It's something that I had to get used to, you know? Shout out to that tree though. You are missed. You still explore by boat, but also with oh. the wolves. The wolves are awesome, but riding around with them on the ice, <laughs> The controls suck a little bit. Also, sometimes the controls leave the fuck out and at one point they just stop listening to my command. Oh, to listen to my calls. And also, when you get off the sled and you go do your shit, they won't <laughs> shut the fuck up. Yo, stop, stop tripping. The dogs keep barking. You know what I do with Sammy when he barks? <laughs> <laughs> In the book, enemy variety was an exaggeration to call it a problem in the first game, but it wasn't ideal. Now there's a lot more. Uh, let me explain this to you using maths. Amount of enemies in first game, X. Amount of enemies in second game, X plus Y. But not Y plus Z. Do you get it? No. So they reuse the old enemies, which is fine. Not a complaint at all. And add more on top. Plus bosses. So many more bosses. First game didn't have bosses. This game, many bosses. Many, many, many. Shout out to Bjorn. Can I triple? It's good for sure. Although, you know, if you're being really precise, I did notice that many bosses are like introductions of enemy types. Many games do that. It's fine. Hey, we have more bosses. <laughs> The gameplay will feel immediately familiar to you. You feel right back home. Now there is one major new feature. I don't consider this a story spoiler. In fact, I predicted it after I played the first game. I said the second game is guaranteed to have this. I will circle back to this later because it's important to understand my rating. So I recommend you listen. But for now, to the very sensitive, you get a small spoiler. It's not a spoiler. Like, why are you even watching a review if you don't want me to talk about the game? Come on, you know what? Three, two, one, here we go. Playing as Atreus is a great idea. An amazing idea, in fact. The, the great, great Antoni Antoni Mongoloni Mongoloni predicted, predicted it. I knew they were going for this, and I love it. Not because the gameplay itself is, like, amazing. Really, no, more on that later. I just love the fact that you can do it. <laughs> 
Ich, ich muss sagen, ich habe genug von dem Affentheater. The music changes, the vibe shifts and the audience can tell that things will never be the same. But Renton has to do this. Before we continue here, you know me. What, What area code is Amal? My ratings oh, yeah. are based on how much fun I have. No science to it. Mass Effect Andromeda, 9 out of 10. Uncharted 4, 7. Spider-Man, 7. Last of Us 2, 9. Death Stranding, 9. Just to mention some of my greatest hits. If I don't like something, I have to say it. I hope this is what you appreciate about uh, me a little bit. You don't have to agree, but at least try to listen. If you do, you might even understand my gripes a little bit and have a chance with me in bed. Analyse fatal. Ultimately, I am incredibly disappointed in God of War Ragnarok. I will make my case now based on three pillars. Story, combat, UI. We increase severity as we go on. Let's begin with the user interface. Or should I say, in your face? Massive step back from the first game. Unfucking believable. First game clean as fudge. The information is presented straight to the point. Everything well sorted, not sensory overload. And it's not a matter of getting used to it. When I played Ragnarok for the first time on stream, I was like, yo, what the fuck is this? Web oh God, I hate, oh. It took me 50 hours to finish this game. I did all the side shit, almost 100% of the collectibles. I never got used to it. It's so badly organized. There are too many numbers on screen, too much information at once, such a cluster fuck. Main weapons are in the same row as craftables and upgrade and weapons in the same row as their pommels and attachments. Nothing short of a catastrophe. Not to mention Kratos constantly glitching and not holding the weapons. You want to change the pommel of the axe? It doesn't show you the axe. You want to change the pommel of the blade of chaos? It doesn't show you the fucking pommel. It shows you his hand. Sometimes he's doing this and he's holding nothing. Bruh. I enjoyed the armor system in the first game a lot. I enjoyed it here as well, but much less simply because I hated sorting through these menus. <laughs> Every second I looked at them reduced my enjoyment. It's an abomination. I still love how armor looks and get better ones. But still, today, if you ask me, Yo, how do I get this information in the game? I don't know! Ah! Next, combat. Oh boy. Didn't expect we would make steps back in this one. This game taught me the value of novelty. I mean, I knew that before. <laughs> Come on. Novelty is such a strong factor. The first game had two new weapons. Even the Chaos Blade were essentially new because they were repurposed, you know, for a new combat system. Now you take away almost all of our skills, revert them back to their weak state, and make us do all of it again. Why? Because uh, for new players, that's too much at once. Okay. okay. And for not new players, the novelty factor for these weapons is gone now. Charging up the axe or swinging the blades, swing it, is an incredibly minute addition in my eyes. And also, for me, these skills break the flow of combat. The coolest skills you learn for the weapons are the ones that have been taken away from you for no reason. And once you learn them again, finally, it's cool again, but it's still like just the cool stuff from the game that's four and a half years old and that I played through four times. How about some new stuff? What no, they did to God, shields please, is even no. worse. They want shields to be like a new item in your inventory and give you different options. And I really dig and appreciate that idea, but the previous game combined shield and own arm combat. It was a third way of playing the game. That was the point of the whole poise bar. You could use unarmed and then increase poise and do a finisher. Now the poise bar has become basically a useless addition to the game because there's no more unarmed combat, essentially. Even when you have your axe somewhere thrown away and you do a finisher, the axe insta spawns back in your hand and he does a axe finisher. There are so many cool shield moves <laughs> that I really miss. I miss the boom, the druck wave. <laughs> that was cool. And even worse, the game takes your original shield away very early and gives you other crappy shields with no counter move. I love the boom, slow motion and bam, counter move. And like 20 hours in, they give you the old shield back. The only good one in my eyes. Why? It's like if you played Portal 2, the first half of the game, you have a pistol, no portal gun. You take it away to convince us of a worse shield system and then you give it back because you realize yo the old shield is actually the best now you do eventually get a new weapon i will not say what it is and it's a cool one i like it but come on bro this is the game's collector's edition this is how the first game ends this is how the second game begins this is the most famous and renowned and notorious norse god way to set the wrong expectations here holy shit maybe it was just me and i'm the only one who expected that i think that was a huge letdown but you do you now when it comes to the enemies and the average fights what they did here reminds me a little bit of what Arkham Knight did to Arkham City. Arkham City just improved the combat of Arkham Asylum on every level. Arkham Knight, although still a great game, kind of made things a bit too complicated. They added too much. And I think what we have here is similar. I don't think they made the combat much better, but they made it more complex by adding really annoying enemies like the lizards, or there's this one small enemy that you have to kill because it keeps healing the other ones. Special health bar resistance, so you have to switch weapons. They keep you on your feet and they keep you thinking, right? I understand the effort. Nonetheless, I feel like Ragnarok constantly tried to overwhelm me and not allow me to play how I want. Fights became stressful, not 
challenging. It's a different feeling. It's all about the feeling. I have to talk about you play as Atreus. When I got to play him at first, I thought, yo, this is awesome. I love this idea. And it's a different combat system and all that. But you play as him for at least 10 hours. At least for me. I really collected everything. But his gameplay is so much more restrictive. His equipment management is basic. His skills are more basic too. His combat is more basic. He's a very shallow character in comparison to Kratos. Fun when you first get to do it, but it really wore me down very quickly. Make him equal to Kratos in terms of depth if he takes so much playtime. Idea. Imagine this. In The Last of Us 2, when you play as Abby, I know you guys hate her. She's the worst. You hate her. You hate her. I get it. Put that aside for a moment. moment. But imagine if Abby did not have a skill system, did not have a crafting system, but the same amount of playtime, which is the same as Ellie's. That would be fucking horrible. But Abby is the same complexity, but different. Atreus is just different and inferior. His segments drag on forever. It feels like I'm playing a budget version of Horizon. Not good. Now, last but not least, the story. Hear ye, hear ye. I really don't know how you guys are gonna respond to this video. Before anyone dares to say it, I thought you don't care about stories. I thought you're a game play fuck with game. I thought you were a monk. Listen, buddy boy, a good story for me is like the icing on the top. The schmeckma around the shaft. Two weeks, no shower. Try me, bitch. Once I'm already bought into a story and I do care about the characters, then I absolutely will listen and it will be important to me. If in GTA 5 we still played Nico Bellic, but now he turned into a Brazilian transvestite by the name of Almanda Oliveira de Soso. Was kann ich mir darunter vorstellen? Sech? And he said, Hi, oh, sisters. I would say, Look at the mercy, good my boy. boy. Once I care, I care. God of War 2018 made me care and invested in Atreus and Kratos. There is no undoing that. My primary frustration with God of War Ragnarok story is that it's directionless, has no focus, no theme, no consistency. What made the first game so great was a simple premise. Complex characters, simple story, right? A father and son relationship. Kratos not knowing how to be a good father, how to raise him on his own. It carried the game all the way through. The rote Faden, rote Strang. Spreading your mom's ashes was something that anyone could instantly understand and relate to. It's important, it's personal, and it creates an immediate sense of urgency without having to create this contrived narrative. It worked because it was simple, sometimes, sometimes naive. naive. In Ragnarok, on the other hand, I asked myself throughout the entirety of the game at every point, why? 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 Before every life-threatening situation that Kratos puts his son into, I asked, what's the reason for this perilous adventure? What, what is, is the charge? Why not just leave instead of war? Your son's a whiny bitch and in puberty, big whoop. That's why you risk your life and his life constantly over and over again while also complaining that you want to keep him safe. It doesn't make any sense to me. The reason behind the entire main storyline is not only unconvincing, but also uninteresting. And the kratos Atreus relationship is inconsistent with no clear conflict. There are some ideas floating around, you know, occasionally like, hey, you gotta trust me, or hey, you gotta be okay without me, but it's just made up in that moment. There's no consistent stuff. No tangible problem that they overcome or work on. It's a funny paradox. The stakes are higher and lower at the same time. Paradox on. Remember in Inception when he walks the stairs and then he's like, paradox, paradox on. Higher because it's a world ending event, right? Ragnarok, Thor and Odin. Wow, big showdown, crazy shit. But they're also infinitely smaller because I didn't care about any of it happening. You can't just say it's important to make it feel important. I care about Kratos and Atreus. That's what matters. By losing that deep personal layer of the first game, it sacrificed what made it so special. Kratos has a shocking and astonishing astonishing and frustrating lack of agency and purpose in this game. He's just sort of along for the ride and uh, becomes nothing more than a grunting buffoon. Oh, you're so grumpy, Kratos. Ha ha ha. The fuck? Take Baldur, for instance. I didn't know who he was before the first game. I don't give a fuck about Norse mythology, but he was a great antagonist because they explained his storyline. His battles were epic because they mattered. I don't care if I fight Odin or Thor or whatever, if it doesn't make sense to me and if I don't care about them. I just prefer games having a smaller scale and just be focused and on point than this all encompassing mess that just falls flat all the way. There's no moment here that made me as emotional as the beginning of God of War 1. Low there, do I... A burn. No moment that made me go wow, like when Baldur goes... There's no moment that gave me goosebumps, like when Kratos has to retrieve his blades of chaos. It just goes on and on. What God of War Ragnarok tries to go in for instead is this Marvel-style endgame type story with all the Hollywood high school drama bullshit that we've come accustomed to. Big battle go boom boom! Assemble a team! Epic twists and turns that are pulled out of thin air just for fun! <laughs> There's this one scene, no spoiler, don't worry, where some no-name character sacrifices himself and it's like, oh. and I'm sitting there with my controller thinking, who are you? <laughs> 
so many unnecessary characters in this game. It's unbelievable. There are some heartfelt moments and they could be cool if they were a conclusion to some type of art, but they just materialize out of nowhere. Undeserved catharsis. That's a good word for it. And speaking of catharsis, the ending, the great conclusion, the final boss fights. Insultingly boring and uninspired. I have to say this at this point, it really sucks, but I don't care about craters in the trees anymore. And finally, the pacing is bad. The game goes on narrative breaks before it's even established a narrative. There are segments that drag on for so long with no clear purpose and no freedom. If you know, you know. Let me just give you a hint. Angry Dildo. It feels like the game had 50 different writers and every single one of them wrote a different part and it didn't communicate. So it ended up just being a complete mess. I do have two more smaller problems I really want to mention before we conclude here. The replacement for all the Valkyries are not even remotely on the same level. These berserkers. No more hidden doors spread around the realms that you have to open and they take you down in mysterious elevator and you walk up to a little arena and they're standing there silently waiting for you. Now you activate a gravestone. What? It felt really lackluster to me. Then the Muspelheim challenges. I really enjoyed those in the previous game. Here, they make you repeat the same challenges over and over again. What a horrible system. If you want to get early access to the videos, vote on what games will be reviewed next. Peer in the videos, go on Patreon and help me out there. I really appreciate all you guys supporting me. So now you know this about me. I'm sorry. I want to join the cheering masses, but I am destined to watch from the shadows. The main character in this tale that we call society. <laughs> hey, don't hate me, okay? I still enjoyed the game, all right? God of War Ragnarok is a good game, no doubt. But if the prequel is a masterpiece, then this just pales in comparison. So to all the outlets giving this such amazing ratings. Suck, 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 suck. Final rating, <laughs> Now, Reddit meme review. Let's see what we have here, hopefully more than last time. When Sophia opens the toilet after Ranton finished. Sophia doesn't have a Karen haircut. Fucking dare you, bro. Oh, dare you. I saw an opportunity and I took it. Wake up, mother. I pissed the bed. <laughs> I told the story many times, but I used to be a bed pisser until very late in my life. I haven't done it in many years. I pissed the bed. <laughs> She's like already waiting for her in the washroom. Nice. And then what's this one? Ranton. Ranton. No effort shit! Okay, cool. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Okay, I'm dizzy now. <laughs> I have to calm down. And let me tell you, I have a spider web behind the camera. Yucky! <laughs>